Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. The problem which we are going to see today is to count strictly increasing subarrays. So in this problem, you will be given an array of integers and you need to count the number of subarrays that are strictly increasing. And the condition is that all the subarrays have to be of size more than one. So if you have just one element, then you'll not consider it as a subarray. If, uh, it should have a minimum of two elements. So we basically have to count the uh, number of such subarrays that are strictly increasing. The expected time complexity is order of n, and we are also expecting an extra space to be of order of one. So let's look at uh, a few examples first of all before diving into the code. So suppose we are given the array one four three. So here we have just uh, one uh, subarray which is in strictly increasing order, which is one and four. One, four, three cannot be in strictly increasing uh, in a strictly increasing order because three is less than four. Again, four, three cannot be uh, that type of a subarray. And yeah, so there were uh, only uh, three possibilities, and out of that, only one is possible. So that is why one and four is the only subarray. Now look at this array. So this in this array, you see that one, two, three, four, all the elements are in increasing order. So in this case, uh, there are six uh, strictly increasing subarrays possible. Uh, how? So uh, first of all, let's make the uh, pairs of two elements. So you can have one, two, two, three, and three, four. Then let's make pair of uh, three continuous elements. So you can have one, two, three, and two, three, four. Then the last combination, which is all the four elements, so one, two, three, four. So in total, you can have six elements here. Okay, now let's look at the uh, last example. So one, two, two, four. So in this example, we have uh, one, two as a one uh, increasing array and two, four as the increasing array because these two elements are same. So uh, we'll not count these elements in. Okay, so first of all, uh, the simple solution. So the simple solution would be to generate all the possible subarrays. And for every subarray, we check if the subarray is strictly increasing or not. So this is basically the brute force algorithm. So the worst case time complexity will be order of n cube, which is, uh, which, uh, which is uh, totally not acceptable because uh, we are right now looking at us uh, looking for a solution which uh, does the job in order of n so let's look at a better solution so the better solution is to use the fact that if a sub array uh, from element i to j is not strictly increasing then the sub array from element i to j plus 1 or j plus 2 or j plus 3 or say n minus 1 till the end of the array that will also not be strictly increasing so if you have three continuous elements which are not in strictly increasing order then you cannot have you cannot add one more element to it uh, and uh, and that cannot be a in strictly increasing order that will also be uh, not in strictly increasing order so we'll uh, exploit this fact now in this algorithm so let's see so uh, we have the driver method here. So in this, we are just having an array. We calculate the size of the array, and then we call count increasing method on this, where we are passing the array and its size. In this uh, uh, method, count increasing. So we have the arguments array and its size. So uh, we have a variable uh, count, which we initialize to zero. Now, and this will be basically the result which we will be returning at the end of the function. Now uh, let's look at the uh, crux of the algorithm. So this is the crux of our algorithm here. So we iterate over the array from the first element to the last element. And we first of all uh, pick an ending point. So uh, uh, we uh, have, a, we start the second loop from I, j equal to i plus one and we keep on uh, iterating till the end of the loop so we have two loops here where we are start uh, where we are basically picking the starting point and the ending point and then we check that uh, if array of j is greater than array of j minus 1 
so if the element is greater than the uh, previous element so then we uh, keep uh, counting those elements but if uh, we come to a situation where the element j is smaller than the j minus 1th element so the current element is uh, smaller than the previous element then we uh, break out of uh, this inner loop so this inner loop breaks and then we uh, start with uh, the next uh, permutation which is possible so uh, in this case we actually do the uh, job in order of m time complexity where m is the number of sub arrays in the output uh, this is because uh, this uh, these two loops although we are using two loops but uh, they will execute only uh, the number of times we have the uh, sub arrays in the output okay but uh, we want to do the job in order of n time complexity where n is the number of elements in the array not m which is the number of sub arrays in the array so let's find out the uh, most efficient algorithm so in this algorithm uh, we'll be doing the job in order of n time complexity so the uh, idea uh, which we are going to exploit in this algorithm is that if you have a sorted sub array of length uh, len then uh, it will add basically len into len minus 1 by 2 uh, sub arrays strictly increasing sub arrays to the result so if you have uh, this as a sub array so because this has this has four elements in it so it will basically contribute to six in, uh, strictly increasing sub arrays so you can you can have two elements at a time that will uh, that will include three uh, sub arrays then three elements at a time that will include two and then one will be the whole of the array so three plus two plus one that will be uh, six uh, sub arrays that will be uh, inserted into the total uh, strictly increasing sub array count so let's look at the code so we have the function count increasing uh, which have which checks as an argument the array and its size so again we have the uh, count variable which is initialized to zero which we will be returning in the end yeah so now let's look at the uh, crux of the algorithm so we initialize the length variable by one then we uh, start traversing through the array by using this for loop and then we uh, see that uh, if uh, array if element i plus 1 is greater than uh, array of i so if the element i plus 1 is greater than the current element then we keep increasing the length the variable length and then we keep on going like this till the point we find that this condition is false so the current element is smaller than the, uh, the current current element is greater than the next element so if that is the case so we have found out the uh, basically the length uh, which is the maximum length of this sub array so we'll basically uh, append the uh, length into length minus 1 by 2 value into the uh, count variable here so that will include all the sub arrays that could have been uh, the part of the result and then we initialize the length equal to 1 because now we'll have to start the counter from the beginning again so this is the uh, crux of the algorithm also uh, if the uh, array is totally traversed so uh, this length plus length plus plus will be the last uh, statement that will be executed and the loop will break so to check that uh, we have uh, this condition here that if after the loop breaks if we have length greater than one then we take into account the sub arrays uh, from that also and we have the length minus one into length by two so we add that to the count and then we finally return the count so in this way uh, this algorithm uh, basically works in the time complexity of order of n which is what we needed and it also uses the space complexity of order of one so in total uh, we saw three methods so the simple method have a time complexity of order of n cube which is uh, which is very bad and uh, then we had a better solution which was doing the job in order of m time complexity where m is the number of substrings in the output then we had a best method which we call the efficient solution uh, where the job is done in order of n so that is all for this tutorial uh, you can visit this link for all the material which we discussed right now and to also run the code in the uh, id which is present at the geeks or geeks website 
and uh, you can run and check the code yourself thank you very much